Welcome to Optimal Play. I'm Brandon. I'm Steven. And if you're like us, you are probably going a little stir crazy as you've been staying home from social events, maybe working from home as we're all kind of doing the, 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 the social distancing thing, uh, <laughs> doing our part to make sure that this coronavirus that uh, is outbreaking around the world is spreading as slowly as possible. If you are doing that, that's great. Thank you. And if you're going a little stir crazy, um, we are big gamers and know that games have a great way of connecting people. Mm -hmm. um, so we're here to talk about, and I'm really interested in this and don't know much about it, but what are some ways that we can still use games to be social, to bring friends together, uh, even though we're all at our own homes? Um, Steven, you've done some online tabletop gaming or mm -hmm. some uh, alternatives to mm -hmm. being face to face at the table. Uh, what would you recommend? Yeah, so the first thing I'd recommend, because it's browser-based, it's free, it's pretty easy to use, is called Board Game Arena. Um, mm -hmm. so you can just go to boardgamearena.com. Um, they have a list of games uh, sorted by like casual, medium, hardcore, um, and you can pick out uh, a fun game, uh, maybe one you've already played before. Um, like one I saw in the casual section, it's pretty easy, it's like King Domino. Mm, um, right. But they have, you know, some more hardcore ones as well. They have a most popular section. Um, if you want to just pick like a, a generally popular game and you don't care too much about how complex it is. Sure. Um, and so that's like a really good like first step. Um, shouldn't be too intimidating to get someone to, you know, join you on Board Game Arena. I love that I've never heard actually of really any online board game, um, uh, any place to play or even buy board games, I feel like sorting it that way at like mm -hmm. level of casual versus hardcore kind of thing. So that's a great place, I think, to send people and to bring really anyone, <laughs> any of your friends who might be going crazy in their own homes uh, online with you. Yeah, yeah. The one downside is if you're looking for a specific game, you know, if you've got that friend that like, they only play Q or they only play code names or they really like something like a time, it might not have the specific game that you're looking for. Mm. Um, so you kind of have to be a little bit flexible. Um, if you're willing to learn new games, you know, YouTube can be a great way to uh, learn a game when you don't have that like friend to explain it in person. Um, so lots of uh, YouTube like learn to play videos. And does that have voice chat? Uh, so no, um, but uh, so the thing I would highly recommend is any of these options um, make sure that you're on like Skype or Discord or even like call someone. Um, I know it's gross. I don't think I have a device that does that. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> if you have like one of those old versions of iPhone that like still have the call app, you know, it's mm. like this thing that your parents probably use. Right. Um, but yeah, if you have one of those, um, make sure that you're like actually talking with people. Um, because really, like, board games are about like social connection, it's not about like just you know, beating up randos online. <laughs> um, you know, we've all done plenty of that in Fortnite <laughs> and, you know, Counter-Strike and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really about the same experience that you would get around a table, um, which really requires like real-time voice chat. Yeah, totally agreed. I know I have a weekly game night at my office that will not be happening as normal because we're all working from home for ever <laughs> uh so i've been racking my brain for ways to be able to say like hey it's still on game night is still happening uh, i think board game arena sounds like a great option mm -hmm. uh we can get everyone my company uses google hangouts mm -hmm. so we can get everyone on there and just um you said it was browser based right mm -hmm. so yep. this can be something that i can send out a link to via email mm -hmm. to my coworkers and just get everyone online on tuesday night yeah i love that idea um the one resource that i've used to play online games is tabletop simulator yeah that's a great one too right yeah it's a little bit um i'd call it kind of a step up in commitment because it's mm -hmm. not free mm -hmm. right it is a piece of software that you buy usually from steam um or from humble bundle or different pretty much anywhere you buy video games on a computer right mm -hmm. and you then use the steam workshop which we'll link to pretty much anything we can that we're talking about in this video we'll link to in the description so check out links there mm -hmm. to uh to go straight to it but it's around 10 or 20 dollars depending mm -hmm. on whether it's on sale and then you download um like mods for it that are the mm -hmm. games right yeah have you used this much yeah yeah i have um i've played uh, arkham as well uh the card game as well as some board games on there mm -hmm. um and actually only the uh person who's running the game has to download the mod so as long as like you the or 
Okay, so the mod. Everyone needs to have the yes, software, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the mod for the specific game, only the person running it has to um, have. So, you know, if you want to take it on yourself to be the person who does a little more time and, and uh, effort in setting up the Tiny Top Simulator, you can make it sort of easier on your friends by downloading the mod, making sure you know the game, making sure you know some like handy shortcuts, um, like which keys to press that are useful in Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> right. Uh, and you can make it a much easier experience on your friends. Yeah, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it. That's yeah. right. What keys do you press to flip that card over? That kind of thing. Um, but that's great to know that you can do a lot of the work yourself and just invite people to come play, spend a couple minutes kind of teaching them the ropes and, and hit the ground running. Um, I think you had mentioned to me off camera too that they sell this in four packs? Yes, yeah. So you can buy it as a four pack, give it to your friends. Um, I will say if you have a cushy office job and all your friends work at bars and restaurants, you better buy all of their copy of Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, if you're the one still getting a paycheck, <laughs> buy a few copies of Tabletop Simulator for your friends that aren't. Uh, it's a really good gift right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Tabletop Simulator, it gives you... What I think is cool about it is that it places you kind of sitting at a table, that you literally are, are rolling dice, moving things around. You can flip the table, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't recommend doing that until the game is over, but you can. <laughs> and so it's kind of the, the premium, a little higher learning curve option, but it also gives you the, the I, I like the atmosphere, Yeah, right? is yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say. And I don't think I've like ever really looked for a game and not been able to find a tabletop simulator mod for it. Oh yeah, people, um, I think people are just doing this for, for free or out of their own interest in doing so, yeah. but people have, have created mods for just about any game you can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? What else uh, have you used to play games online? Yeah, so there's a lot of board games that have official apps uh, on the iPhone and Android stores, maybe mm. on this, on Steam as well. Um, so I'm thinking of like Agricola, uh, Pandemic, maybe hits a little too close <laughs> to home. Um, I did see that that's sold out on Amazon, so so lots of people battling fictional disease right now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the digital version didn't sell out. Yeah, right. I, I, I think they'll still have a few of those left. But uh, Ticket to Ride I've seen through the ages. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people use these um, kind of like as a play by mail type thing where you, you know, take a turn and then maybe your buddy takes his turn, her turn, two hours later after work. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to be played that way. Right. Yeah, you can absolutely all be on at the same time. The game's fly by because the app's doing a lot of the work for you yeah. that you normally do, shuffling cards and everything. And uh, again, you just want to be on some other device or software so that you can chat. Exactly, right? yeah. As long as you have a voice chat going, you can replicate that you know, live board game type experience. For sure, for sure. Um, they do generally cost a few bucks. Um, Good point. So, um, you know, you probably aren't trying a new board game, uh, you know, every week uh, if you're doing your board game night over iPhone um, because everyone has to buy it. Yeah, there's no price of admission that's like one price covers all games like yeah. Tabletop Simulator. It's you're each spending a few dollars for each game that you want to play. So make sure it's a game that you want like, to get a, a good number of plays out of probably. Exactly, yeah. Um. I think the other thing that uh, came to mind as we were brainstorming for this was the internet's a great way to play role-playing games, right? Yeah, totally. Um, a lot of role-playing games are like very easy to do just over voice chat, like Skype or Discord or, or phone. Yeah. yeah, there are some, like if you, if you when you hear role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games, you may think Dungeons & Dragons, which is maybe one of the more um, complex ones and games that need a lot of dice and paper and, and things at the table. There are lots of RPGs that require almost no components at all, that you can practically just get on Skype or Discord, video chat together, and just play, right? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of a lot of games, it's more about the fantasy improv with maybe the occasional die roll, mm -hmm. which, of course, only generally, um, I guess you both maybe want die, um, but the Dungeon Master or Game Master does, like, most of the heavy lifting there. Um, right. So if they have most of the equipment, um, you know, worst case scenario, if you don't own any die... Um, I know I've relied on like borrowing die from a DM before. You know there are, there are programs that you could oh yeah you could download or or free programs to do a free die roll. Yeah, if you type dice rolling into Google, you'll find something that basically is a random number generator, and that that's all you need. Yeah, and if. Dungeons and Dragons, if, if uh, fantasy isn't your thing, there's Fiasco, which like recreates the story of a Coen Brothers movie, basically. <laughs> or I'm familiar with Lasers and Feelings, which I think la Lasers and Feelings, uh, it's primarily sci-fi, but actually is even a really simple uh, way of playing a game that can be applied to any type of setting or story mm -hmm. that you want to play in. Uh, yeah, I, I like all the like uh, World of Darkness games, like Vampire, or Mage, mm. Werewolf. Um, none of those have like miniatures or anything like that. At least the way I've I've played them. 
um, it's all just rolling d20s mm -hmm. and talking with each other yeah yeah for the most part you really just need um to learn how to play to play these right which means uh ideally supporting the creator and like paying a lot of them now will for just a few dollars will give you a downloadable pdf mm -hmm. of the rules and really just one person needs to know how to play so it's... And it, yeah and if you've ever looked at those role-playing game uh rule books that are like 400 pages i'm thinking when would i have the time to read that <laughs> huh <laughs> now's the time <laughs> it will sure uh it'll sure while the hours away yeah <laughs> um all right yeah so lots of good options there's really no excuse for having no human interaction <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you will go crazy if you just mm -hmm. you know spend the whole time uh you know binging netflix and and playing games by yourself and um as, as fun as those things are in small doses uh we all generally need a little human connection yes yeah and so um with that Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to Optimal Play on this channel, the main thing that we do is playthroughs of board games. You can check out our other videos. Uh, we are all about the connection that uh, is made at the table and friends spending time together. And so in our videos, we're not pointing the cameras at our hands, we're pointing them at us and still enjoying the game and you'll learn a lot about the games, but also we just have a great time playing it. So. If that sounds like another good way to spend your quarantine time, <laughs> check out our other videos. You can subscribe somewhere. I always, I don't know why I always do this. I always point in the wrong direction. It's probably not here, but if you're using YouTube, you, you know how to do that. So <laughs> we'd appreciate that. And uh, we're gonna do what we can to try to crank up the content, uh, the, the content hose during the quarantine, because what else are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, with that, any any other any parting words for our uh, our quarantine friends? Uh, you know, hang in there. Hopefully, have fun um, in in a tough time. Yeah, wash your hands. Um, all right, uh, uh, socially isolated. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good luck, and until next time, be optimal.